Welcome to Comic Book Nation, the only show that does it all for geek culture and the official podcast show of comicbook.com. This is Comic Book Nation bonus round. If you're watching, this is what we do on our YouTube page where we have things we want to talk about that don't quite make it into the regular show, but we just can't let it go. Today, we have something special for you. We've brought in some one of our experts from the comic book gaming team. Cade Onder is with us. Hey, Cade, what's going on? I just woke up. Can't lie to you. I just rolled out of bed, but uh, I'm okay. here. <laughs> it's Friday, and we usually don't want to be here either. And we are like <laughs> building today. I so. respect the honesty. Yeah, we are. We are <laughs> to try, but um, Kate and the rest of the gaming team has been hard at work. You guys have had a busy week. We are going to talk about some of the big things that happen and the biggest. <laughs> and I didn't know that you were stepping into a minefield when you took on this gaming assignment. Yeah. But apparently, you, yeah, you're out here looking like all quiet on the Western front right now. But uh, Cade has reviewed the new Harry Potter game, Harry Potter Hogwarts Legacy. Um, and yeah, there's the game itself to talk about and review, which is what we're about to do. There is also some, you know, there again, there's some big things surrounding this game. Uh, I forgot. It looks like I didn't link the image. I had our comic book review because we have a pretty review image uh, that from Cade's official review of the game. But now that we're here, why don't you just kind of walk us through your experience? I mean, is this game even worth all the controversy surrounding it? Is it worth playing? Uh, I think I think it's a good game. Uh, so I did a review in progress because we got the game kind of late, like about four days before it came out and or for before the review embargo. And uh, that's not enough time to play a huge RPG and I think have a final verdict on it. Um, but uh, I think it's a good game. Is it worth... So today, uh, a review came out that gave it a 1 out of 10. There's been 10 out of 10s. And I'm like, it's neither of those. It's somewhere in the middle. It's like an 8, in my opinion. Uh, it's a solid first like at-bat for a studio that's never done something like this. And I think it, it justifies itself... But it's I, in a year, we're going to look back at this and just be like, was that worth getting that upset about? I don't I don't think so. Yeah. And if you're not familiar, uh, obviously, we're not going to get into this sure. here because that's not what we do. We keep it light and entertainment, baby. <laughs> and the first old thing we talk about is how the Eagles are going to win the Super Bowl. But wrong. <laughs> as you can imagine, the Harry Potter franchise has been uh, mired in some controversy for yeah. years. There's the stuff with, you know, creator J.K. Rowling and. The social issues have been speaking on, the backlash to that. And so anything Harry Potter now is instantly a hot button topic. Mm -hmm. And it seems this game is no different. So, yeah, but you're saying it's just in the middle. It's just kind of in the middle for all the for all the hoopla. Like, what are some of the what are some of the positives as like a Harry Potter? Are you a first? Let's get kind of are you like a Harry Potter fan? Yeah, like, well, absolutely. Hard. Yeah, I, I, I really love those movies, right? Because it, it created a visual language for something that was just made up words in a book, right? That's a really hard thing to do for anything. And I think a lot of adaptations kind of fail to do that. And it created a really rich world that you could visualize. And then the game takes all that visual language that the movies created, applies it to this game, and allows you to interact with it. Um, being able to walk through the halls and see all these kids... Uh, like lifting each other up in the air, walking on walls, getting howlers that are yelling in their faces, um, blowing stuff up in their faces, and just doing kid stuff and just being able to experience that is really awesome. And then getting to go outside of Hogwarts and explore the world, see all of the weird things that don't matter, but like help enrich that world. Uh, like there are these little flowers that are like horns. For some reason, I don't know why, but you walk past them and they go honk, 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 honk. And it's just like so Harry Potter and so alive. It doesn't matter, but it's just like, I love that. It's cute. And so uh, <laughs> the honking flowers. The honking flowers I, yeah, no, I mean, that was my next question. And it's a good follow up question, which is, you know, is what kind of Insomniac Games did with like Spider Man, sure. right? And making those Marvel Spider Man and Miles Morales games those feel like you are Spider-Man and that's yeah. the draw. Mm -hmm. Even if you don't do anything, I spend most of my time with my son just sitting down and like swinging through the city, yeah. doing mm -hmm. activities, stopping mm -hmm. crime, living rescuing in cats. World. Yeah, living yeah, it exactly. and being Spider-Man. That's the fun of it. Mm -hmm. um, so does this, do you think it achieves this for Harry Potter in that, in the wizarding world? It doesn't make you feel like you are a wizard and you are part of Hogwarts in that world. 
Yeah, the the one thing I think a lot of people expected when going into this game is it would be like Bully, the Rockstar game where you go to school yeah. and classes, or Persona. Uh, I think it's a little bit less of that. Like when you go to Hogwarts, it's kind of like the school stuff is like side quests that you can partake in. Uh, you're more focused on your grand adventure and, and mystery that you're partaking in. Um, but I think it still has enough of that that it's it gives you the wish fulfillment of being a Hogwarts student. And the combat, I think, is really solid. Uh, you get, like, four spells that you can put on your buttons, and you can customize which ones they are. And you can use that to, like, combine spells in an interesting way. Like, <clears throat> you can lift someone up, hold them towards you, light them on fire, and then push them away into other enemies, lighting them on fire. And that's just, like, one way of handling a combat situation. So I think that that way of just capturing the kind of danger of the magic and the fun of it i mean these are children so it's a little grim but you know you're lighting kids on fire and then pushing them into each other but i think it's still a satisfying game to play it's that uh was it uh dissonance where it's a little bizarre but it's it's still fun to play this game looks dope by the way the trailer's <laughs> playing kate, <laughs> kate, kate let me ask you this because i was bit by Gotham Knights last year, oh, yeah. and that it was very clearly yeah. a live service game that they uh, pulled an about face from at the last second mm -hmm. to uh, make it not be one. Um, are there remnants of that here, or is it is it a pretty solid RPG? It's pretty solid. You know, uh, as with any RPG, you have like loot that you can get that has like numbers and stuff. I really don't like numbers in my games. Don't make me do math. Just make me blow stuff up. That's all I want to do. And I think this game allows you to engage with that if you want to. If you want to, like, enhance your robes, you can do that. But, like, I really haven't. I've done a little bit of it to know what it does. But I think you can just play through the game, not pay attention to any of that stuff, and just enjoy being your own created Hogwarts student. And then one other thing, because this was the big joke on social media, was that, oh, you can be a dark wizard and use the unforgivable curses. Yeah. So people were like, oh, I'm going to walk right in at the very start and start <laughs> about cadavering everybody. Yeah. How much freedom is there really when it comes to that stuff? Um, well, the the idea is you will not get that stuff to like the end of the game. Like, because sure. obviously you're a student. You don't have the powers of Voldemort. You have to learn how to get that if you want that. Uh, so that comes like pretty literally at the end of the game. Uh, and then from there, if you still want to go do that, you have to do it on like enemies. You can't just walk around Hogsmeade and just be like, I don't like the, the shopkeeper. You're dead, <laughs> um, unfortunately. But uh, you can, if you see an enemy and you use the Avada Kedavra curse, it kills them like blatantly. It is not, does not hold back. It is, it does what it's supposed to do. Well, man, this ain't Grand Theft Auto. All right. <laughs> uh, my final question is, I know that Harry Potter is kind of in that Rick and Morty space right now where they're hoping to push past, you know, the shadow of their original creator. Do you feel like this game is a step towards doing that? Yeah, it's it's interesting. Uh, th there are a lot of things about this game that feel kind of antithetical to the some of the philosophies that jk rowling has had in her novels that she's been accused of being anti-semitic and stuff in, in the books um and there are things in this story uh there are a lot of goblins in the story and it feels like the story doesn't agree with some of the conclusions that maybe she drew about those characters so it's it's doing a lot of uh repairing of i think the reputation of the franchise in a very interesting way so uh, I, it feels like people that love Harry Potter, but maybe don't necessarily agree with J.K. Rowling's views made this game. Okay, so that is Harry Potter's new Wizarding World game, Hogwarts Legacy. You can read Kate's full review on comicbook.com gaming. And I'm sure we're going to have a lot more from the game over on our gaming section. So keep an eye out there. But before we you get out of here, uh, there was a small little thing you guys had to do with Nintendo this week, too. <laughs> A small yes. little game debuted a trailer. Uh, a trailer to the trashiest Zelda game in existence that I will never enjoy. Connor. You don't like Breath of the Wild? No, I'm a real Zelda. I was a guy. I was a guy who opened his Nintendo on Christmas 1987 oh, and God. had three things sitting there: Super Mario Duck Hunt. Mike Tyson's punch out in a little gold game that made me say, what's this? And stick it in and start playing. And I never, so you must, back. you must hate that. My favorite Zelda is wind waker. 
No, not really, no. Really? Why? Why? My favorite Why? one is the Game Boy one, then the Super Nintendo one, then the original, I think, I'm, are my top three. I'm still waiting on the Wind Waker and Twilight Princess uh, ports to the Switch. What oh, the hell, God. guys? Come on. Wind Waker's so good. All right, but uh, no, <laughs> all shade aside, there was a new game, a Zelda game trailer, and I will say I was into this one as the sequel. I, I think it made improvements. Really? I think I'm going to like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, talk to us about Zelda. What's the new Zelda game all about? Yeah, I mean, it, uh, it started as a DLC for Breath of the Wild. So it's funny you say that. The whole thing was this started as a DLC for Breath of the Wild, and then it expanded into its own game. Um, one of the things that's really excited me is uh, the development started after Red Dead Redemption 2 came out, and mm -hmm. the, the developers said they're very influenced by that game. That's my favorite game ever made. So I'm like, combining these two seems like a dream game. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's more Breath of the Wild. I mean, the thing that I love about Breath of the Wild is the freedom to do whatever you want, not just like running around killing everything. But like, if you think you can, like there's a, a moment in the gameplay where you see Link like riding his shield down some rails and there's a guy on the edge of a like cliff next to it. The idea that I'm going to be able to like ramp off of that, like Ollie off of it and just like hit the guy off the cliff with my shield is awesome. I love that kind of stuff. Uh, encouraging the player to think outside the box to solve problems and and make the game their own is is what this is all about. And it seems like we're getting a lot more of that. And there's like vehicles in this game too, which who doesn't like to fly around on sky machines? Right. And th that feels like they just looked at all of the videos of people being like, hey, I'm going to break the physics engine. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, flies me all the way across the map and just said, hey, let's just make that a mechanic. So 100%. when he's on the flying platform here, I'm just like, he just looks like Green Goblin. Like, well, I mean, again, <laughs> I'm man. Like, exactly. That, yeah. So that. But like, Kate, are you worried that it is just because the map looks so similar yeah. to the first one, with the exception of the float of what's floating in the sky now? Right. Are you worried it's going to feel too much like Breath of the Wild? And is that even necessarily a bad thing? I don't think it's a bad thing. Uh, well, maybe for Kofi. We'll see. <laughs> um, the the uh, world in Breath of the Wild is is not, I don't want to say generic necessarily, but it is just kind of like a big open field and some mountains to climb. Um, I, I think that's a fun playscape to be in, and it encourages, again, to kind of use your imagination to uh, make the gameplay, bend it to your own whims, right? And I think this game will do that again. Uh, I hope that... I don't run around and feel like it's a recycled environment too much. I don't want to see like the same villages and buildings. I want to feel like I'm in a new space, uh, but I don't know how much we'll, we'll get beyond the stuff in the sky. Like you said. All right. And uh, I think the last mention we had, I didn't, we don't have to go too deep in this, but Metroid prime is getting a remaster. Uh, now there's a game that reinvented that I did love Metroid prime. So yeah, we're getting a remaster. Metroid prime was the other big, takeaway from uh the nintendo event you guys psyched for that looking good yeah we we do like zoom calls whenever these events happen where we kind of claim the stories that are coming out and as soon as we saw metroid prime we were very excited but there's been a rumor for such a long time and then it said out today and everyone screamed like <laughs> that doesn't happen uh yeah. shadow drops rock um I've never played Metroid Prime, but uh, it's the game I've been waiting for. I don't play my Switch very often, but I'm like, when that comes, I'm dusting it off, and I will play the hell out of it. Uh, so I'm really excited for it. It's, you know, a first-person shooter, uh, kind of a little Halo-ish, maybe even like Star Wars Republic Commandos, uh, if you ever played that. Um, so I'm pretty excited to get into it. Uh, but everyone seems to really be loving the, the remaster already. Uh, we have a reviewer, Mark, who's doing it, and uh, he's having a blast with it. All right, Kate, uh, Kate. I got I got one question for you because you know there were still a lot of things that people were hoping for out of this direct that didn't happen, and it's led to the theory that this might be the last year for the Switch, simply because next March I believe will be seven years into the cycle, and that's sure. usually right around the time we get something new. Uh, do you buy the theory that we're getting a Switch Two next year? Will it be a Switch Two? Are they going to keep this? It's a console and a handheld at the same time. Mm -hmm. What's your thoughts on all of it? I definitely think whatever they do next, they're going to continue what they have now, right? Like the Wii U didn't work. So they're like, let's try something completely new. This has been a glowing success. And it's like one of the best selling consoles of all time. They will do more portable console type stuff going forward, I think. Um, whether it happens next year or not is another story. I don't think it'll release next year. I wouldn't be surprised if 
uh, they kind of do what Xbox and PS4 have been doing, where like when Metroid Prime 4 does come out, it'll be Switch and Switch 2 or whatever it's called. Kind of like how Breath of the Wild was Wii U and Nintendo Switch. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if they reveal the next Switch next year, maybe like in the fall, and then it comes out in 2025, right? God, time's going by so quick. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if that's what happens, but I don't think it's coming next year. I'd be really surprised. Do you think whatever the next Mario thing is, whether it's Odyssey 2 or what have you, you think that's the game that bridges the gap? Yeah, I mean, you want to have something big at launch, and I think we only got one, like, proper, brand-new, big Mario game with the Switch. You know, they had a bunch of remasters and stuff, but it's surprising they haven't leaned into that more. So I wouldn't be surprised if next year they're like, we have a new Mario game coming, and we will have it on the next Switch. All right. Thank you, Cade Onder. You can catch Cade's review of Hogwarts Legacy and the comic book dot com gaming teams breakdowns of everything we just talked about and so much more over on comicbook.com gaming otherwise thank you for tuning in for comic book nation's bonus round and be sure to subscribe to our youtube page and catch the show live every friday at noon eastern here on comic book nation youtube peace this is